Welcome to the Ridiculous Hour Foundation, where we exist to inspire lives ridiculously responsive to the promptings of God. My name is Kat Silverglade, the founder of the Foundation, and this is our April 2021 Mobile Monthly Mission. From soft hearts to hard feet. Here's the story. The first time I heard this phrase, it went straight to that place inside that makes your head nod up and down involuntarily. You've experienced that, right? But before your brain cognitively registers any form of agreement, your spirit says, oh yeah, I agree with that. I'm pretty sure I first heard the phrase in an audio presentation by an Anglican priest named Nicky Gumbel. He described the woman who coined the phrase, Jackie Pullinger, with the admiration and respect you would give someone with hard-earned street credits. She had secured the right to speak the words because, well, she'd lived the message. She had lived it to the point of a hard-to-argue-with-Jackie-on-that-one brand of deference. In 1966, at 22 years of age, Pullinger moved from England to Kowloon, Hong Kong, which may not seem like such a big deal in 2021, but in the 1960s, the area where she moved was called the Walled City because it was cordoned off from the rest of the population and completely unregulated by any formal legal authority. The Walled City was run by gangs. It was riddled with drugs and sex trafficking. It was populated by criminals and the poorest of the poor. It was, I would imagine, the only place most of them could afford to live or maybe to hide. Here's what she did in Kowloon. To one addict at a time, to one criminal, to one needy person, she gave the love of Christ. A meal, a shelter, a hug, a prayer, the word of God. By 1988, so much transformation had taken place in the lives God touched through her. Queen Elizabeth awarded Pullinger the MBE, Order of Chivalry, the most excellent order of the British Empire. I'd never heard of this honor before, quite frankly, but after hearing Jackie's story, I looked it up. It's a big deal. Anyway, the Jackie Pullinger phrase that caused the bobble-headed reaction in me went something like this. God wants us to have soft hearts and hard feet. The trouble with many of us is that we have hard hearts and soft feet. Ouch! Doesn't that hit something true in you? It sure does in me. And and gosh, don't you love the phrase hard feet? What a word picture. Well, here's where her expression transports me. It takes me back to 2012, 2013 time frame. My one and only son was finishing high school and the senior parents and kids were getting ready for graduation and prom and year-end banquets and parties. It was such an intensely joyful time, except for this. One of my mom friends, actually a few of my mom friends were battling cancer. But this one in particular, her only son had been doing the school thing with mine for more than a decade. I'd be in the middle of a joyous moment or in the revelry leading up to graduation, and then I'd find myself pulling away and wondering, how can I be there for her? What do I do? What do I say? I actually ended up spending a lot of time pushing too hard to be there, doing things that didn't really seem to help at all and saying things that just seem embarrassing now. One day, we were sitting, just the two of us, at her kitchen table sharing a sandwich. She must have been sad or telling me something tender because I instinctively reached over and stroked her arm with my hand. I didn't think about it in advance. I I just do that sometimes. I, I watched my mom do it a lot when she wanted to show someone she was with them, really with them. It's what I do with my husband or my son or my sister or my daughter in love or just about anybody I sense needs the assurance, you are not alone right now. I'm here, feel my presence. Anyway, I could feel her stiffen up. She got a bit rigid and in the most forced gentle voice, she said something like, that makes me feel like a cat. When you do that, I feel like a pet. 
I don't want to be pet like a cat, cat. I stopped immediately. I withdrew my hand. I said, got it, like it was no big deal. And then I started to fight the awkward silence that sometimes comes after something like that, not knowing how to move past it or what to do. And then finally something popped out of my mouth like this. So, what do you wish people knew about the way you want to be loved through this journey? Well, the only way to describe her reaction is to say that it did seem to unlock some pent-up place in her, like the question was just the crack the dam needed to crush the wall holding back the water. A flood came, a flood of sharing, a flood of connection, a flood of release. It was the Niagara Falls of what not to do during her cancer journey. What do I wish people knew? I don't want to go to a group of strangers and sit in a chair while people put their hands on me and pray. I don't want to hear about the green powder miracle diet that's going to cure everything. I don't want to try the holistic thing that worked for your buddy Dave. I don't want to be stroked like a pet. She, she said more that I don't remember now. It was so incredibly raw and well kind of funny she she wasn't mad she just felt safe in that moment to actually let out what had been building up inside and then we started laughing which made the half chewed food we were eating spill out of our mouths which only made the whole thing that much funnier eventually she volunteered this story about one of her best comfort moments during cancer She'd mentioned in passing to a friend that her feet hurt from all the chemo. Something about the treatment made the pads of her feet thin or sensitive or I don't know exactly what, but no matter what shoe she tried, her feet hurt. One day, the friend showed up on her doorstep with a pair of Birkenstocks. Try these, she said. Here's the essence of how my friend described that moment with the shoes. Cat, they were wonderful just what I needed. What relief. All I said to her was, my feet hurt, and she took it on herself to find a way to ease my pain. She cared about my feet. My feet! She cared about my pain. I don't think I've ever felt so loved. Of course, I'm paraphrasing this whole conversation and situation, but that last phrase, I don't think I've ever felt so loved. Those were her exact words. She's been gone for several years now, and I miss her dearly, but if I close my eyes, I can hear them coming out of her mouth in her unique voice. I don't think I've ever felt so loved. Over a pair of shoes. Well, that certainly rocked my midget-minded boundaries on the phrase, never so loved. Sheesh. The scriptures talk about the impact the Lord has on our hearts and in our hearts. Maybe this is the verse that inspired Jackie Pullinger to coin her memorable adage about soft hearts and hard feet. I don't know. But it's from Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 26 and 27. And it goes like this. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. That sounds like a soft heart to me. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and to carefully observe my ordinances. Hard feet scream that one, yeah? I'd spent plenty of time talking to my friend about Jesus. Tender, sweet conversations, awkward, uncomfortable conversations, questions I didn't have any idea how to answer. And now she was essentially saying to me that she could see Jesus in this tender-hearted friend with the hard feet, feet that walked a mile to ease her physical pain. It was really beautiful. And it made me want to have hard feet, to skip the pedicure, to watch the calluses form, to celebrate the shocking reality that the spirit of the living God that offers to come and dwell in our hearts, he points us to where he's walking. Listen to the words. I will give you a heart of flesh, soft heart. I will cause you to walk hard feet. Gosh, that sounds like Jesus, doesn't it? Coming in the flesh, walking amongst us here on earth. The Word made flesh. Our mission this month is, you guessed it, simple but not simplistic. 
And in this audio version, we've gone a bit deeper on the practical part of our mission. You'll hear things here that aren't in your written pack. It's one of the perks of receiving the audio version. It's also an opportunity for us to say thank you to everybody who's taking these baby steps with us in podcasting. We're new, so we'd love to hear what you're liking and what you'd like more or less of. In your mission pack, last month, you received two small hard wooden feet and one small hard wooden heart. Some of you got two. There's no hidden message there. Go ahead and pull out those those now. And if you don't have a set, just drop us an email and we'll be happy to send them along the ridiculous hour at gmail.com. So here's the first part of the mission. We'd asked you to consider beginning each morning in the month of April with a prayer. A prayer for a soft heart and hard feet. Lord, you remove hearts of stone and you give hearts of flesh. Only you know our hearts. You promised to come and dwell with us. You came and made your home here in my heart and I want you to lead me where you'd have me go. I want to be at home with you. I want to go where you're going, where you're leading me. Give me a soft heart sensitive to you, your call, your ways, your nudges, your spirit, your character, your promises, your truth. I want to be defenseless against those good things. Let the knocking and the nudging and the poking break everything down that needs to be broken down in my heart. Amen. Please make it your own. The idea is to pray for soft hearts and hard feet, however you're going to pray it. Here's the second part of our mission. We'd ask that you find a way, your own way to use those symbols we gave you, the hard feet and the hard heart, to prompt you to make a deliberate choice when the Lord starts knocking. He won't ask you to do anything that's inconsistent with his holy word. And if you're having doubts about whether it's God, you should definitely pause, seek godly counsel, talk to your pastor, pray. Here's a practical way you might use those symbols. Put the heart in one pocket and the feet in another. And when you feel a nudge from the Lord, you might put your hands in your pockets and pray that God would help you to choose the hard feet, to choose to walk towards his tug, to take a step. You might say something like, cause me to walk, Lord. Help me to take a step, Lord. Lead me to your good purposes for my life. Help me to trust you. Or you might put them by your computer where you can see them or in a place where you pray or you journal. You get the idea. Our hope is is that you'll make it your own, but you won't hide these visuals. You'll see them during the month of April and watch what God does. Third, we'd ask you to consider this, especially if you're feeling apprehensive or God is asking you to go in a direction that you've never gone before. Hard feet become hard and calloused over time. They become hard because they take repeated, firm, deliberate steps in a direction of a call. But that starts with one firm step, doesn't it? Perhaps you do know where God has been calling you, but you don't know how to begin. You might think about hard feet in terms of a firm step, a deliberate step. If this is you, try this. Stand up right where you are. And take a firm step over to a place where you can pray or journal or write down what's happening. If you already know what God has been prompting you to do, just write it down. Write down one firm step you can take in his direction towards that call. You know what? If you take one step in his direction, he'll be with you. He's already there. And then if you take another he'll be right there too and then another and if you could visualize that for yourself you can see him walking with you and that's what he does he walks with us but he asks us to take firm steps in his directions maybe baby steps but firmly planted steps I'm doing that with this podcast I've never done a podcast before I do feel God leading me in this direction this is all new and honestly I'm just taking one baby step at a time but they are firm and they are deliberate, and they are in an intentional direction, even if they are wobbly and new. Before I go to our usual benediction and send us all off with a blessing for our hard-footed April, would 
Could you just give me a second to share this wonderful tidbit about Jackie Pullinger? I heard an interview where that MBE was mentioned, the, the award for the most excellent order of the British Empire, the Order of Chivalry that we talked about. Someone mentioned it to her and said what a big deal it was. And her simple response, and of course I'm paraphrasing, but her simple response was, the Lord's pleasure was enough. It was enough for her. Gosh, I just love that. So let's end as we always do by reminding ourselves and others that if you don't know exactly where to begin with God, don't worry. He started with you a long time ago. He won't stop knocking. The question for each and every one of us is this, will we respond? That is our mission after all, inspiring lives ridiculously responsive to the promptings of God. Amen? Amen.